Hi, it's Michael Polarski, another Friends of the Trees Botanicals video. And here we are at a 25-year-old agroforestry site that I planted starting in 1995. So it's been around for a while. And before we started, this was just a farm field like you see in the foreground here. And then I planted all these trees and shrubs as a medicinal agroforestry system. And at the time it had, it still does have lots of perennial herbs in it, as well as medicinal trees and shrubs. And this is um, two acres and we're just standing on one edge. And you can see how dense this is and how diverse. Uh, I'm really into diverse and dense plantings. And you can see we now have a tree canopy. We have snags in the system. This is really coming along ecologically. It was, uh, I farmed it for nine years, sold it. Other people took it on. And then it was abandoned or semi, you know, a couple years back. And so we're just, I'm in the process of doing a restoration of this system because it uh, hadn't really been taken care of. And so we'll see more of what happened uh, during that uh, abandonment period. But, or it's been growing quite well on its own. So here's Oregon grape, and uh, there's still some berries on some of it. But Oregon grape for the root and the berries, red osier dogwood for the bark. We do have fruit in here, Nanking cherry. We have leg nitrogen fixers, uh, Siberian pea shrub. We have a lot of juniper in here for juniper berries and foliage. I see sticking out over here a cascara for the bark. And on it goes. There's, uh, I see the uh, Amer cork tree down here with the really yellow leaves. And there's some balsam fir sticking up above that. So it's uh, mostly deciduous, a little bit of conifer. And uh, there's, uh, this edge here is just very solidly a windbreak. And it's interesting to see how well things have sort of worked it out among themselves. These were planted really closely together, these shrubs, three feet apart. And as you can see there, as you can still see, almost everything has, uh, has accommodated itself, found a, 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 a face in the sun. Some have gotten taller, some have come out to the side. But it's and it's very dense in here. That's this is this is one of our densest spots. So we'll look around and we'll show you what the interior of the system looks like and how it has evolved. But uh, I will say that this is now I see bird nestings in here. It's really an ecological rich place and it is quite the windbreak for the neighboring farm fields. Uh, so we're protecting the farm fields for better production plus having this uh, wonderful ecological uh, medicinal agroforestry system. Okay, and here we are in one of the interior shots. So you can see we've got some fairly large tree trunks in here now. And um, it's kind of like an arboretum, the place. And what's really interesting is how the forest floor has developed. This, instead of being an open field, we now have an, a forest floor and in this area, we have an awful lot of black cohosh. There's this hundreds of black cohosh uh, babies here. And so we'll be digging some of them up as part of, the, um, part of the yield. And another thing we have coming up in the understory is lots of tree seedlings. Uh, for instance, here's service berry seedling. Here is a eastern black cherry seedling. Here is a filbert seedling. Here is a high bush cranberry or cramp bark seedling. And there's linden seedling, seedlings and it goes on and on. There are thousands of tree seedlings here in the understory and we're going to be digging some of them up next year as part of the income stream because we want the restoration to pay for itself. Um, another thing that's developed is that because of the, the overstory was, was getting so thick, there's been some thinning done. And so now we have a lot of biomass in here. Um, here's a great big brush pile here, for instance. And that's a lot of biomass. That's breaking down. There's a lot of fungi in the system and mushrooms now. And so that is an ecological attribute. And then we have, you know, we actually have, uh, here's, you know, some 
There's actually logs in the system now, down logs, woody, large woody debris in the system. So the system's really coming, you know, it's um, really coming along nicely. The, there's too many of these cottonwood seedlings or suckers that have come up. So I am going to really reduce a lot of the cottonwood in here. Some of the cottonwood have started dying back on the top, and so some of those will be snags because we want snags in the system. Here's, uh, these are eastern black cherry here, these couple of trees in here. We have a lot of eastern black cherry in here. Uh, that's the eastern black cherry bark. And it goes on and on. There's just so many different uh, species in here and quite the different understories. So, Anyway, here's a little bit about this particular understory. Let's go look at a, another one over here. Here's an understory, typical of a forest in a shady forest. Uh, here's Lily of the Valley, Convalaria magus. Here's more, a lot more of the black cohosh in here. Here's Daylily on the forest floor. Here is uh, Violet, uh, Viola odorata. All these have edible or medicinal uses. And so this is a nice dense understory. The overstory is just so much here. The two biggest problem trees in here that I'm going to have to deal with are the cottonwood, this one and that one and that one, because they sucker. And so root sucker. And so we have to, we're gonna have to really work on getting those reduced in the system. And then back of me here is some black locust and those also root sucker and they're really thorny. So next year we're going to take out most of the black locust and a good deal of the cottonwood. We'll leave some of the cottonwood as a nice overstory. That will get a little bit more sunlight into this system here. We're going to, again, take out more of the uh, of mugwort here and give way for other things in the understory. And uh, if you turn around here, you can see this is this is some of the bigger stumps in the system. Again, look at this, you know, large woody debris logs on the forest floor, old stumps that are suckering. We'll just be cutting that off. This is this is on the way out here. But I like having old stumps, woody debris, dead wood in the system. And so here's a just an example of like we're really building biomass here. We're really build, doing carbon sequestration. This, before this was just a farm field. They were trying hard to get the organic matter content up and keep it up. We have got organic matter here big time. So this is a, this is a, agroforestry is a wave of the future in terms of carbon sequestration for the world. So this is just one example. So here we are uh, on one of the edges of one of the tree rows. You can see a fair amount of paper birch in here, medicinal. And here's linden. Uh, which is again medicinal flowers up in here. There's some more cottonwood. As we're, we're pushing this edge back a bit from, from things that have been advancing out into our open here, so more new brush piles, but it's, some of the stems in here are just really thick, so we're in the process of the restoration is we're reducing the amount of stem in here and cutting a, a lot of dead wood. There's a lot of dead wood uh, because there wasn't enough, wasn't enough irrigation for a few years and so some things started dying and so we have to uh, cut out more of the dead wood and open up the system a bit. This area in here was uh, deliberately kept open for cropping of more sun loving herbs and then there's a you know, hedgerow windbreak on one side. Here's a bunch of uh, Oregon white oak planted from seed and uh, Lots of junipers down there, aronia berries, on and on. And here's an interesting understory to the this area right here. Um, this is Vinca minor, which we sell medicinally as well. So Vinca minor as a creeping ground cover, and so that's another thing we can harvest. Uh, a lot of this area is just uh, we might say weedy uh, now, and so we're, we're again in the process of restoration. 
Here's another area where we, again, have an, uh, an open area for ground level herbs with uh, hedgerows on either side. And here's a lot of uh, black walnuts uh, going down this row here. Nice, most of them have a nice straight form for timber eventually. And this area here has been colonized or by uh, mugwort. So most of the ground story right here is mugwort, Artemisia vulgaris. And it, it is one of the worst self-seeding or one of the best self-seeding herbs in the garden. So I would caution people about uh, planting too much mugwort. It really, or you have to take care of your garden. Again, this has been abandoned. So I'll be taking almost all of this mugwort out and replacing it with something else over the next year or so. Uh, there are various uh, berries in the understory here too. I see some Nanking cherries. I see some uh, see buckthorn over there. Here's an interesting one that's come in. Here's snowberry. It's a native understory shrub and this just moved in on its own. I did not plant any. Birds come and poop out the seeds and and so there's a lot of this stuff has planted itself that at this point. These cottonwoods are root suckers. They're all going to go. You can see high in the overstory there's a one that's died back and that now is a great snag. So I just love having snags in the system. So that will, will stay but we're going to take out a lot more of these cottonwoods and reduce the uh, you know, sort of manage the understory. You can see a, there's a fair amount of dead wood in the system here. We're going to we're going to get rid of that. We're going to leave some dead wood because dead wood's useful in an ecosystem, but you don't we don't need that much of it. OK, so let's go a little further up here. Hardly anybody grows hackberry. Uh, you can see there's berries up there. Birds, you know, it's a bird food. You know, it's just sort of a habitat plant. Uh, here's another part of our interhedro area, and it gets some sunlight, it's relatively shady, and it's interesting to see what evolved here. This is Olympic mullen. Here's the, here's the, uh, an older one, still has some flowers on, and these are, flowers are exerted, and they're really thick when it, when it's really in bloom. So this, and these, these are the ground covers, and this is a biennial, so these are the annuals. So next year I'm going to get a big crop of mullen flowers here. So part of the income uh, in this area is going to be the mullen. Here's another filbert seedling. And again, so there's seedlings in here as well. And uh, you can see here's the density of our hedgerow area there. There's trees in here. And here actually is aronia berries, this beautiful red color. There's still some berries persisting. We'll probably shorten those and get them to bush out and reduce the amount of overstory here so we can get uh, improved berry production. Here's a one, one peony that survived all these years. Here's a, uh, there's a little bit of fever few in here that's persisted. And there's some cohosh back in here and, and other medicinals in the understory. And once again, you know, there's dead, dead wood, logs, debris in the understory. So when we're just beginning our restoration process here. We've actually cut out a fair amount of dead wood already, but there's a lot more to go. So here's one of the parts of the system that is one of the highest seedling or tree and shrub seedling production here. And uh, there is just hundreds of little seedlings in just this little area. Here, for instance, is Nanking cherry. And here is seedling Oregon grape. And here is seedling filberts. And here is the seedling eastern black cherry. And here is the seedling serviceberry. 
and here is a seedling mountain ash surrounded by more eastern black cherries. They're the most prolific. Here is seedling linden and here's, a, here's another one and here's another one and here's another one. There's four linden seedlings, five linden, six, seven, you know, they're just really thick right in here. So, and uh, here's black cohosh, our, you know, again, here's our medicinal herb understory. Here's a Peking cat or a Catoniaster. I don't really want to keep that one in here. So some of these are going away um, and just going to be discarded. Some of these are going to be dug up and sold to friends and family. And here, notice, notice here on these uh, leaves right here, there's all this white droppings. That's bird poop. And so whenever you have an overstory like this, like these snags right here, there's always a rain of fertilizer coming down. So part of the reason for having an agroforestry system is because it attracts fertility. This is really building fertility. Uh, a lot of the fertility is held in the biomass, but uh, the, you know, as next year, of course, the poop will wash down to the ground, be picked up by the plants. There's a juniper seedling over here, a little bit older. And it goes on and on. There are hundreds of seedlings in this area. So we're going to dig a whole bunch of this up next year and then uh, sell it to locals and to other people. So in a sense, this one of the benefits of the agroforestry system is it becomes its own nursery, a self-seeding nursery here. And so we're just really pleased with the, the self-seeding aspect. And just look at the thickness of this. Uh, boy, there's a lot of thinning out to do. So in the foreground here, this is one of the real weedy areas that's mainly going to have to take out wormwood and uh, mugwort. But there is some uh, a goldenrod in here, and the goldenrod is a crop. And there's also a lot of St. John's wort, which is a weedy plant, but it's also we make money on it. So uh, we're going to keep some of the goldenrod and some of the St. John's wort, but we're going to reduce a lot of other things in this neighborhood here and replant here. The uh, surrounding, if you look up past the farm field next door, you'll see that there's uh, another windbreak back here, hedgerow windbreak, and there's several in the system besides our two acres here. We have other windbreaks and hedgerows in the system. Again, helps the farm fields next door. You can see mountain, uh, the in the four and the the hills around here, this is a oh a 15 to 20 inch rainfall zone. It's pretty dry. This is irrigated. We have to irrigate this to keep this kind of density going. And uh, so you can see from the dry hillsides, pretty dry. And then further back are the snow-clad mountains of the North Cascades. So we're we're in a valley in the North Cascades. It's just starting to be winter. It'll be snowing soon. So uh, next spring we have our work cut out for us here as we do this uh, restoration project.